All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another networking video. We just did a little dive into latency, and we picked up some stuff on microseconds and milliseconds and what things actually mean. We're going to do a little dive into iPerf 3. So another way to think about this one is what in the world is iPerf 3 trying to tell us, at least in terms of, of TCP. So without further ado, uh, let's get some iPerf 3. So what do we know so far about iPerf? Well, we know that one side is the server, iperf3-s, and we know that the other side is the client, and that's where all the options are. So you do iperf3-c, and then the target, you can say, I want my window size to be of a certain type. I want to do TCP versus UDP because I'm more worried about jitter. So there are a collection of things that you can do, and usually those things are options on the client side. You can also pick the port number that you want to use, things of that sort. All right, so... That's the basics of what we know. And at the sort of introductory level, what iperf3 tells you is the overall bandwidth that you have uh, going between the client and server. Okay, good. So here is a quick test. I just did this in the lab, right? And so we've got a switch there, which we now know adds a little bit of latency, but not too bad. And the latency sources come from, you know, the source address table or the MAC address table. Uh, the CRC calculations and like that. And there's my two servers. So we've got the client on the 71 and uh, the server on 72. And this is the report that we get back from the default settings in iperf. And so what we see here is that there at the top, right, here's my command, iperf3-c, and then I'm going to the, the server, and I get this report back. Now, there's a couple things to note on this report. First of all, the default is a window size of 65K, and the, um, the default is to do 10 seconds. The default is also to do TCB-based connection, which is why we need to worry about window size. And then we can see that there's these bits here that we're going across here, right? 943 megabits per second, 941, and we're transferring 112 megabytes in that one second and overall the transfer in 10 seconds was 1.1 gigabytes but the bandwidth was 942 megabits per second now wait a minute this is a gig link and so why in the world was i only given 942 megabits instead of the full gigabits well let's see if we can figure that out now, before we can wrap our heads around that, maybe we got to remember our training a little bit here. Remember that we're on an Ethernet network, and an Ethernet network is, comp is well, the transmissions anyway, are frames, and frames carry IP packets, and IP packets carry TCP or UDP datagrams. And so the, the payload of an Ethernet frame is 46 bytes to 1,500 bytes, and in here is where we would pack an IP packet and inside that IP packet would be the TCP or UDP or ICMP or IGMP, whatever you're carrying. Okay, so if we remember that, and we remember that there's a maximum data field size of 1500, then we sort of understand maybe or start to get, you know, an insight into what's happening with our throughput. So let's do the math behind this. So gigabit ethernet is 1 billion bits per second. So the question that we're trying to answer here is, why did I get 942 megabits per second instead of 1,000 megabits per second? And for that, we have to remember that there's overhead involved. So at a minimum, with TCP, which is what we're talking about here, we have the Ethernet header, which is 14 bytes. We have the IP header, which is 20 bytes. We have the TCP header, which is 20 bytes. And together, we've got an overall overhead of 54 bytes. Now, the Ethernet payload, 1500 byte maximum, is what will carry the IP packet and the TCP uh, datagram. So the two headers are in there. So the maximum Ethernet payload is actually 1460 bytes. On top of that, we got the 14 bytes for Ethernet. And so we do a quick calculation. We find out the maximum theoretical throughput that we could have would be 96.4% or somewhere in the neighborhood of 964 megabits per second. 
But it gets worse than that because in between Ethernet frames, there's something called the interframe gap, which is another 12 bytes worth of space. It's not actually 12 bytes of data. It's just 12 bytes of space. And so we have to add that to the overall transmission. So our percentage of uh, in the overhead is actually a little bit worse. And so we're down to 95.7% efficiency. Or if we were doing the straight up transmission, we'd be at 957 megabits per second. But it's worse than that because TCP receivers have to acknowledge the data that's sent, right? And so it's not just that you're just going blah uh, across the iperf connection. What you're actually doing is you're sending lots of data and then we pause as the other side acknowledges, right? Because the window closes down and then, or is in the middle of closing and the sender, well, it's not exactly true, right? You're just going to acknowledge things. The window is shrinking, not closing. And then we get an acknowledgement back and the window opens back up for the TCP sender. So that's why we're down at 942 megabits per second. Let's take a look at an actual capture and see what's happening. And here is the transmission between the two sides. And so we can see that right here at the beginning, right, we have our SYN, SYNAC, ACK connection. Maybe we'll blow this up a little bit. Okay. So SYN, SYN, ACK, ACK, that's just the TCP handshake. And then right away we see a message coming across from the client. Now if we take a look at this, let's see if I can point this out to you. We can see early on that we've got this good size window, but we've got a small amount of data that's in there. And then 72 comes back. Now this is the acknowledgement, not a whole lot of data here, right? But it's just the acknowledgement of what was sent. And so that's why we see these acknowledgement numbers here. So we're just sort of warming up to our connection. And as we go down through, now what I want to take a look at or keep an eye on here is we'll open up the IP packet for, well, actually we can look down here. We'll see, we'll see the size or the amount of data that's been sent and we can see the window changing too as it uh, shrinks. So here we go. So this one, and we're interested in the direction of flow here too. So if we take a look here, we're getting started. We're getting started. Oh no, what's happening here to the window? Calculated window size, what in the world is that about? The TCP window has a maximum size of 65,000 bytes, but window scaling allows us to grow that much larger. Okay, so we got that going on. So we'll continue on with our connection. Here's another one from 71. Oh my goodness, look at the size of this TCP payload. Now an IP packet can be 65,000 bytes and the sequence numbers can go up to 65,000 bytes without messing around. But the ethernet frame can only carry 1,500 bytes. What in the world is going on here? And this is because our adapter has checksum or uh, yeah, the, the um, the checksum offloads. And so what we're not seeing here is the actual thing that's going across the network. This is Wireshark receiving this after the, the NIC is done processing this. So this is an enormous chunk of data, but really what it's doing is collecting a bunch of chunks of data that go across the network. Clearly this does not fit in an ethernet frame. And that's due to the, the checksum offloads. Now the other fun thing about this is what direction is this going to? Normally when we think of client and server connections, we ask the server to send us something. This is the opposite. This is the client sending all of this data because if we look at the return, the next one from the server right here, there's no data in here, right? So what the client is doing is sending massive amounts of data in a particular way or a particular direction. And so that's what we want to sort of see in iperf. Uh, and we want to try to understand what in the world is going on. So um, when we think that we've got these enormous chunks of data, that's a little misleading because we have to look at the capabilities of the network interface card that we're using and which direction that we're going in. All right, so that is the behavior with the default configuration of iperf. Now in this particular image, I'm showing you what happens if we change the window size. And you can see the command that I've used right here. 
So we were seeing that the default window size is up there above 50,000, right? The default is 65,535. Um, and in this case, I shortened the window. So what is, we have to remember what the effect of a smaller window size is. So we're sending lots and lots of data. So what happens is when you send a big chunk of data, the window actually closes way down or can actually shut entirely. And you have to wait for an acknowledgement to come back from the other side and that opens the window up again allowing you to transmit data so in this particular case because we know this is a fast connection and we know the client and server can respond quickly this is a small window for this so the window is probably doing this or maybe even slamming shut right and then opening back up again and what's the impact we have a 75 percent reduction in overall performance i mean look at these here um, and so we get instead of 940 we get 240 megabits per second so that's the impact of window size on iper and certainly if we've improperly sized our applications at least in terms of window size we can wind up in a world of hurt there too by the way there is one other thing that i forgot to show you on the capture so let's go back to that so if we look right down here i don't know if you can see it but maybe I'll scroll down and we'll see the packet numbers. Take a look at these packet numbers. 286,964. What is the significance of that? That's just for this transmission. That means that in 10 seconds, there were almost 300,000 frames generated in 10 seconds. That's 28,000 or almost 30,000 frames per second. And this gives you an idea as to what kind of animal iPerf is, but also your high bandwidth or high utilization applications, such as streaming services, file transfer. These are all applications that sort of really slam into a network. But that was the thing that I forgot and I wanted to show you before we, before we go. All right, so this has been a little closer look at iPerf 3 and really any performance monitoring software that you're using it's nice to know why you're getting the results that you are and also how the thing actually performs and you can see whenever you're doing these tests imagine this was on a live network and you just slammed into the network with 300,000 packets just from one source so we got to watch that overhead we got to be aware of the impact it really really impacts our performance uh, and that includes both headers and the operation right the operation in this case being that we had to acknowledge uh, this is also why some applications steer away from using TCP today, and Quick is, is an example of some, uh, a standard that's been adopted. All right, that'll do it for this one. Hey, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if I helped, and may those packets always reach their destinations no matter what else is going on on your network.